Hey everybody, it's Tiffany Snyder, your creative adventure guide, and I am on a mission to reconnect people with their internal creative power and reconnect them with their external power of nature. So I'm outside and the sun is at a pretty intense level, but I realized I need to do my video for the day. This is video seven of my 30 day challenge. And I needed to do it now because I'm going to the beach in a little bit. So, um, somebody had asked me to do a owl. A couple people love owls. Me too. And I wanted to share a couple of books that have to do with animal symbolism. And one is for adults. One is for children. I'm going to share with you the adult one first because... Um, this has been a very powerful tool for me to interpret my dreams and learn about the more esoteric world of animals because animals are awesome. They are the guardians of beings. And this is the book, Animal Speak by Ted Andrews. And he has like a really good explanation of how he knows the symbols of animals. And then it's broken down by category. And I just wanted to flip to my owl page because birds are really awesome. Uh, when I see myself in essence, I am a bird wing spread with lots of colors beneath my feathers. So birds are pretty awesome. Let's see here. We got an owl, silent wisdom and nocturnal vision, healing powers, magical. So we're gonna make some magical owls here in a little bit. And this is the kids book I wanted to share with you. Hoots and Toots and Hairy Brutes. I'm sort of reminding myself of the Reading Rainbow. Anybody watch that show when they were a kid? I love that show. Um, so Squib is this little owl that doesn't have a hoot. All he can do is toot. And he feels pretty down on himself about that. And this is about his story of stepping into his power using his voice. And he saves his parents from the hairy brute and discovers the power of his voice. So really good book. I like to read to kids before we are doing our owl drawings. Sometimes I have to paraphrase it because it takes about 15 minutes and when you teach 45 minute art lessons that time goes by really quick but awesome book i love it okay so we are going to release our judgments this is the first time some of you are going, are going to do this with me and i am certainly not perfect to get a realistic looking hour it's going to take longer than i have so we are going to keep it simple stupid right i love that acronym so I do have something to look at. I've got an illustrated book over here. It would be really cool if I had a real owl. Blandford Nature Center did that a while ago and I actually did this from a real owl. Really awesome. Um, but I have a picture and this is gonna do just fine for me to look at the shapes to identify the ones that I need to use to get the form correct. So I see that the owl's body is very close to an oval and it's a little bit bigger at his shoulders at the top so lightly make that if you notice my hand is not on my paper I'm not doing these little marks loosen up it's more general to specific so real light flowy if you need to practice before you put the lead down cool I see that this boreal owl's face is today I didn't know what type of owl I was drawing. I usually draw the one with the widow's peak here and it's a boreal, B-O-R-E-A-L owl. If I'm saying that wrong, sorry, correct me. I appreciate your input. Um, next I would draw the two circles for the eyes and I would include that widow's peak, sort of like a stretched out letter M. And the beak sort of curved, 
do. And I love drawing owl eyes because they're like Wassily Kandinsky circles, concentric circles inside of circles. And I'm not sure if you guys can even see my pencil lines, so we're going to move to a marker real quick here. The basic idea is you sketch lightly until you feel like you get it right, and then you can go over with a marker to intentionally make the lines where you want them. So we got a general plan working to specific details. I wouldn't be saying this terminology until about fifth grade with kids because we are dealing with shapes on top of shapes overlap and really adults we got to be like children too that that fun adventure who cares about being perfect we're, we're letting it go right all right he's perched on like a little branch do do, do. Trees grow like letter Y's, always up and out. Well, not always, but usually. There's always an exception. You get a weeping juniper or something. There's some talons. All right, so this is his profile view. His wings are tucked. He's sort of taking a nap. Maybe he's digesting the mouse he just caught. All right, so I'm gonna move in with my marker now. And I'm approaching seven minutes, okay. So I want to make that pupil real dark and intense first. So I'm adding, or rather leaving the white paper show through for the highlight to show that his eye is moist. And then I'm going to go around and around and around. Okay, he is very wide-eyed, isn't he? Make him look not so wide eyed. Maybe you can give like an eyebrow a little relaxed, right? We said he was taking a nap. Looks like a girl. It's got eyelashes. <laughs> Alright, so then I would. Go around and connect the head to the body shape, bumping and jumping where the talons are in the foreground. Okay, and I'm gonna just add some lines for the feathers. We're not worried too much about the intricate details for today. The owl's feathers radiate from the center point. So I like to call this mark making. Like little hatch hatches. Show some movement. Reminds me of Zen Tangle design too. People can do this type of style with just about any animal. So relaxing. Right. I like to use a variety of different thickness markers too. So this is like the medium. Talons are like ovals. So I've just made the decision I'm only going to draw one owl with you today. But I would be more than happy to have a one-on-one -on -one lesson with anybody that would like to draw more owls. Alright, so he's got like a little shadow here where his legs are coming into his belly. 
And one way that you can draw the feathers if you are into the Zentangle design method, you can use bump lines like stretched out letter U's. This really helps kids develop their handwriting penmanship skills. You can also incorporate the center of the feathers. Like the design that you put on your feathers is really up to you. Maybe somebody really likes zigzags, you can do the zigzags instead. If you have a lot of time, you can do stippling to show value, which is just tiny dots far apart to show lighter areas and close together to show the darker areas. I really enjoy that method, but it takes a lot of patience. Sort of gets you in the Zen mindset. All right, now, if I had a big bold Sharpie, I would show you the areas that were further back by adding a bold line here and here, maybe underneath his talons too. for the shine on his claws. That's how he grabs his prey, right? An owl is a bird of prey, hunts at night, nocturnal. And from here, maybe we'll add some spirals for a different type of feather on his wings. So if you ever make a line where you don't want it, there are a couple of ways you can work with that quote-unquote mistake. Because there are no mistakes in life, there are no mistakes in art. It's really how you react to it and what you do after that is where your power lies. So resist the urge to start over. There's appropriate times for that, but here we're just having fun and we are releasing that judgment. You are perfect right now. And from the wise old owl, I would like to encourage you to use your voice wisely. Refrain from gossiping. If it's not nice, don't say it. Or address the person face to face if you have a disagreement. Use your voice to encourage and uplift people. And there is our wise old owl. I hope you enjoyed the video. And I will get better at this whole outside step by step tutorial business. But you're awesome. Have a great evening. And I'm going to enjoy the beach. See you tomorrow. That was day seven of my video challenge. Whoop whoop.